The Gay Agenda, an agenda for change. Healthy? Previously, After the Ball, guiding manifesto for a new brand of pragmatic gay activism. An agenda for change. What we have discovered is in fact an agenda of heterosexual thoughts and actions that we must somehow change. The Waging Peace Agenda for Change Among Straits spells out the changes in beliefs that gay activists seek to effect on society and in this episode, we review just one of them. Homosexuality is just as healthy and natural for some persons as heterosexuality is for others. Specifically, we want straits to believe that it's a valid and healthy condition. Ping.sg, in advocating for positive portrayals of LGBTQ people in the media. What this means for kids is they can't sit down and watch the same TV with their parents on media core and see images of themselves as whole, as healthy and as accepted. Homosexuality is just as healthy and natural as heterosexuality. Is this true? According to the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association, many men who have sex with men are at an increased risk of HIV. In this day and time, gay men still make up about two-thirds of the new HIV diagnosis. So whether you like it or not, just because you're having sex with other men, you are going to put yourself in a pool where you're having a greater chance of getting in contact with HIV. According to a US CDC report in 2016, one in six men who have sex with men will be diagnosed with HIV in their lifetime, making them 83 times more likely than heterosexual men to be diagnosed with HIV in their lifetimes. In Singapore, in 2020, sexual intercourse remains the main mode of HIV transmission. Homosexual and bisexual transmission accounted for 59%, while heterosexual transmission accounted for 37%. According to the Singapore LGBT Encyclopedia Wiki, it is not known how many LGBT people there are in Singapore. An estimate for Singapore, based on people who identify as LGBT in developed countries, would range from 3 to 5%. Based on these broadly estimated statistics in Singapore, homosexual and bisexual men are 30 to 50 times more likely than heterosexual men to have HIV. Now, we are the guys behind KL.SG and Pink Carpet Service. This web series is based on my true experiences. Mm -hmm. Oops! <laughs> I mean, our community experiences. I have something to confess. I'm... positive. What? You mean like your personality? Oh. In Singapore, HIV infection rate remains high within our community, our gay community. HIV is real, and getting tested regularly is super important. Problems with body image are more common among gay men, and gay men are much more likely to experience an eating disorder. But I probably end up fat eating all the things I bake. No, I don't think you're fat. I was a little chubby last time, okay? Come on, I don't think you're classified as fat. Dear straight people, coronavirus outbreak reveals just how deep body image issues are in the gay community. It's no secret that the gay community is rife with body image issues. Appearance reigns supreme. A gay man's sense of worth is often tied to their physical appearance. An overwhelming 84% of gay men feel intense pressure to have a so-called good body. The reality and struggle of being an average-looking gay man Moving through this gloss world made me feel like I was worthless. There is a strong cultural pressure to have a muscle gym body and not fitting into this stereotype can lead to feelings of shame and self-loathing for some men. Gay men use substances at a higher rate than the general population. This episode shows one of our community's subculture. When mixing drugs and sex together, it can have a serious implication to your body. November 2021, their straight people posted on their Instagram health advocacy groups produce Chemsex Guide to reduce overdoses in LGBTQ plus community. 
Many of you watching this are probably aware of the rampant use of ICE in the gay community. There is no doubt that ICE is an extremely seductive drug. It allows you to experience total sexual freedom and boost your stamina so much that a single campsite session can last for several days. Many retreat into the dark underground world of meth use and sex. This problem is fast turning into a crisis. Confession. I'm hooked onto chemsex and I don't know how to stop. At first, I only had chemsex with Jason and would stick to vanilla sex with my other flings. But soon, regular sex became too boring for me and I started to indulge in chemsex with other men too. It eventually got to the point where the only sex I had was chemsex. Depression and anxiety appear to affect gay men at a higher rate than in the general population high risk of suicide. We will address this in more detail in our next episode. Sexually transmitted diseases at a high rate. At risk for death by prostate, testicular or colon cancer. Use tobacco at much higher rates. Increased rates of anal cancers in gay men. The US CDC in 2014 Gay, bisexual and other men who have sex with men accounted for 83% of syphilis cases and are 17 times more likely to get anal cancer than heterosexual men. Statistics according to Public Health England in 2016 Of all the cases of syphilis diagnosed amongst men in 2016, 86% were gay men or bisexual men. And of all the cases of gonorrhea amongst men in 2016, 65% of cases were gay men or bisexual men. So 2% of the male population are producing 86% of syphilis cases and 2% of the male population are producing 65% of gonorrhea cases. How about in Singapore? Hey, Isaac, what's wrong? Nothing, it's nothing. You know, you don't look so well. What do you want me to say? that it burns when I pee, that I have a sword where I shouldn't have one, and I'm probably riddled with the entire rainbow spectrum of STIs. We're increasingly seeing more and more older gay, bisexual, gender queer men in our community being diagnosed with HIV and other STIs. Why would gay men have disproportionately higher rates of HIV and STIs than heterosexual men? The most dangerous sexual act that you can engage in is receptive, unprotective anal sex. Very high risk, a hundred times higher risk to contract HIV if you're receiving anal sex unprotected. And you can get every single STI I've mentioned in the anus. A 2012 study revealed men who have sex with men have longer periods of partnership acquisition, new sexual partners, a higher prevalence of partnership concurrency, multiple sexual partners and more age disassociative mixing, wider age range of sexual partners than heterosexuals. These factors likely help explain higher HIV or SCI rates among men who have sex with men despite higher levels of condom use. According to GMFA, a gay men's health charity, five reasons why gay men get more STIs. One of the main reasons for our domination in this field is that we're more likely than our hetero brethren to have lots and possibly lots more sexual partners. Dating apps and chem-fueled sex parties mean that infections can be spread efficiently to large numbers of men in a very short time. Ever thought of why gay men are significantly more vulnerable and face high health risks? Moving from gay men to lesbian women. In a 2000 Australian study, sexually transmitted infections and risk behaviours in women who have sex with women. Bacterial vaginosis was significantly more common the prevalence of hepatitis C was significantly greater. We demonstrated a higher prevalence of BV, hepatitis C and HIV risk behaviours in women who have sex with women compared with controls. Why are lesbians or bisexual women at higher risk of STIs or HIV infections than heterosexual women? 93% of women who have sex with women reported previous sexual contact with a man. Sexual contact with a homosexual or bisexual man and sexual contact with an injecting drug user were both significantly more common. The Australian study is consistent with a US CDC report in 2014, likely female-to-female -female sexual transmission of HIV. 
HIV infections in women who have sex with women have been attributed to risk behaviours such as injecting drug user or to concomitant heterosexual sex. In a cohort of 511 women with a history of female-to-female -female sexual contact, 470, 92% reported having sex with both men and women. According to the GLMA, lesbians are more likely to have risk factors for breast cancers, chronic stress, smoking and obesity, higher risk for certain types of gynaecological cancers, more likely to be overweight or obese, use tobacco more often, heavy drinking and binge drinking are more common, use drugs more often. Ever thought of why lesbian or bisexual women are significantly more vulnerable and face higher health risks? If a loved one came out as LGBT, would you be celebrating or be concerned? In August 2017, the Royal Dutch Airlines tweeted, It doesn't matter who you click with. Happy. Hashtag Pride Amsterdam. Is this true? Are homosexual and bisexual sexual activities really as healthy and natural as heterosexual conventional sex? What factors might be contributing to comorbidities and risky sexual behaviour? Did you know that in August 2020, Amazon banned the book title The Health Hazards of Homosexuality, What the Medical and Psychological Research Reveals? Amazon said the 600-page book was offensive. The book took several years to compile. It brought together information from the Federal Centers for Disease Control, major medical professional groups, and other mainstream medical sources, as well as LGBT medical and advocacy groups, all documented in 1,800 endnotes with up-to-date links. Homosexuality is not just a private personal issue. It is an important public health issue Why would such information be removed from the public eye? Should medical research on homosexuality be censored? The public should not be shocked and repelled by the premature exposure to homosexual behaviour itself. It permits our enemies to draw attention to gay sex habits that provoke public revulsion. The imagery of sex per se should be downplayed and the issue of gay rights reduced as far as possible to an abstract social question. Emphasize the civil rights or discrimination side of things. So when we say talk about homosexuality, we mean talk about gay rights issues and nothing more. Be single-minded. So talk, talk, talk about gay rights and leave it as that. What are your views on LGBT activists downplaying the health risks associated with homosexual behaviour and focusing only on gay rights? Has this strategy of LGBT activism impacted Singaporean youth? Singaporeans more liberal towards homosexuality compared with five years ago, IPS survey finds. Survey results point to a growing acceptance of gay sex as well as other matters surrounding gay rights. Gay sex in 2013, nearly half of Singaporeans aged 18 to 25, 47.6%, felt that this was always wrong. In 2018, the figure nearly halved, 25.4%. The proportion of 18-year-olds to 25-year-olds who felt gay sex was not wrong at all nearly tripled from 11.6% to 30.2% between 2013 and 2018. This could possibly be because of increased activism among millennials, especially when it comes to human rights and gay rights. Should there be more public discourses or education about the health risks of homosexual and bisexual behaviour? Does the Singapore government have an obligation to implement policies that promote the health and well-being of its citizens? In this episode, we have focused on the physical health risks associated with homosexuality. In the next episode, we will review the mental health issues associated with the LGBT community. Follow us on... Follow us on... 